to today's special guest, Jean Hatchett, who's a women's rights activist and writer who every year raises thousands of pounds for charity by riding for women murdered by the men they knew. Jean, what's your take on this misogyny as a hate crime? Are you concerned that it's now going, it's gone through the laws and that this could well become law in the UK? Or do you think, well, it's about time that someone's identified that women need to be protected because there are crimes that especially target women? I mean, um, you would think that as a feminist, you think... Yeah, this is going to be a, a, a really reasonable proposition, but uh, it very quickly became clear that, that this isn't the you know, the, the solve all that it, that it proposes to be. And I think the reason that you can't get someone to defend this today and to, to sort of speak on, on why this, um, this amendment's been proposed is because they know right at the centre of this is exactly what you've said, um, is, is this issue of sex and gender, which, of course, are very, very different things. Um, and sex is removed from that hate crime bill. But, you know, if you've simultaneously got a rape rate of... Um, a, a conviction rate of, of less than 1% now, it's, it's effectively decriminalised, then, you know, clearly there's something really wrong with the criminal justice system itself. And so just saying, you know, misogyny is a hate crime now, it, it means absolutely nothing to improving, um, you know, ways of tackling violence against women. We need to look at appropriate sentencing and simply hanging hate crime on, on these dreadful... Um, Oh, these dreadful assaults on women's rights is, is, is going to do virtually nothing at all. And I think, you know, some of the misogyny that we're talking about is actually intrinsic to the system now. So we've got um, bench rules where a, a, a woman who's been raped may have to call her rapist in court her and talk about her penis and where it went. And this is just absolutely, you know, this is misogyny on steroids right, right through the criminal justice system. And this is happening well, it seems to feminist women like this is on a daily, daily basis, which creep and creep and creep until, you know, what are we talking about when we're talking about women? We don't know anymore because, as we can see with this particular amendment, it includes people who say they're women. And, you know, I don't agree with that. Do you think that from the beginning it felt a bit like a trinket? You know, it felt a bit like a, a branding exercise mm -hmm. rather than something really well thought through. Because I must admit, when I first started listening to the arguments for it, I was captivated. I thought, well, this is so necessary mm -hmm. because I felt this constant encroachment on the protections of women that, that, you know, have stood fast for about a century, let's say, um, just constantly being eroded away, whether it's the debate about minority cultures and some of the imported uh, attitudes towards women that we now have in this country, whether it's about the trans lobby and men simply saying they're women accessing women's space, whether it's about the ongoing objectification, pornification of women, the mental health crises happening among, amongst teenage girls. I thought at least this puts a line in the sand and is once again discussing women as sufferers of very particular forms of societal abuse, personal abuse. But it doesn't actually seem to tackle those things. And if, if anything, it seems to me that it, it offers a get out of jail free card for the government to continue to ignore the, the pressures of the internet, particularly on young women and mm -hmm. continue to sort of do a box ticking exercise when it comes to rape convictions. I mean, what can we do now? We can see that things are evidently getting worse mm -hmm. for young women. What can we do to protect them? I mean, we were going to talk about the manifesto later and some of the things that, you know, I'd, I'd quite like to see happen. But regarding this, what women are faced with now is, is the accusations that we're excluding people. And, um, you know, this will allow a, a protected group who are transgender people already protected within yeah. the hate crime um, uh, legislation of the country. And they will be protected again, but they'll be included in the hate crime statistics for women. And so, once again, we will hear this phrase, the most vulnerable women in society are, are trans women. And, and actually, we know that the overwhelming um, victims of, of uh, men's murder of women are, are actual women. So I'm really concerned that, you know, the, this crime of misgendering and, and, you know, hurting someone's feelings is going to measure up against someone going out for a run and being murdered. And that's really not the same thing at all. So I think, you know, we have to really be very clear here um, that men are committing acts of extreme violence against female people. 
And I think that's, that's all been very nicely blurred by the proposers of this amendment. And I think, you know, if you simultaneously cannot get through an amendment that protects women in prison in single sex um, prison spaces and um, we, that amendment cannot be, be brought through. Lord Blencather has tried to bring that to, to the House of Lords twice now and he's had to withdraw it because, um, you know, politicians overwhelmingly look like they were going to defeat it. I hope he brings another, another amendment back. But you've got women who cannot speak up for themselves in prison with uh, male rapists and these, these assaults are happening. Yeah. Um, so I... I I just think this is, like you say, it's a trinket. It's a little bit of um, polish over yeah. the top of offering us virtually nothing, nothing in the way of uh, improving, improving women's rights. Yeah. And they are getting worse.